the morning. Live broadcast from Seattle. Let me start with a story. Uh, we're going we're to talk about um, false speech. I'll tell a story, and uh, you probably won't know how in the world this relates to false speech until the end. But okay, just bear with me. So I had uh, abstained from sugar uh, for over a year, and I had a uh, I had an accident where I hurt myself rather severely, I had to have some surgery and, uh, and I did the whole, the whole recovery and everything without any pain medication, uh, which is a whole other story that I'll tell another time. Uh, but, um, but it kind of, uh, wears down on you, especially when you don't keep up, uh, on, uh, your meditation and your, your, uh, you're getting quiet. Uh, anyway, I was, uh, I was recuperating, and uh, I was on the other side of it. I, it was things were much better, uh, but uh, I went into the kitchen, and there was a pumpkin pie sitting on the counter. And I looked at the pumpkin pie, and I swear the pumpkin pie looked at me. And as I walked back into the bedroom, I felt as if the pumpkin pie was still looking at me. I walked around the house a couple times. Finally, I came back to the pumpkin pie and uh, I, I cut a piece and uh, ate it right there in the kitchen and I ate it with my hands. And then I kind of turned my back to the rest of the, uh, to the house so that just in case someone might walk by, they wouldn't see what I was doing. So I, um, I ate the rest of the pumpkin pie. I ate the rest of the pumpkin pie with my hands. It was like once I started, I couldn't stop. And you know, I, I'll just say this, that uh, it was the first piece was really good. Uh, the, the second uh, handful was, was good, you know, but somewhere in there, it got to be not so good. Anyway, I ate the whole pumpkin pie. I disposed of the pie tin. And then later, I don't know, an hour or so later, uh, Debbie, my wife, said, uh, what happened to that pumpkin pie? And I replied, what pumpkin pie? That's false speech. That's, that's false speech. So let's get quiet for a minute, do the meditation. We just focus on the breath. Not trying to change it in any way, not thinking about the breath, just relaxing into the breath. Just noticing how it works. Hmm. As you breathe in, you're filled. And as you breathe out, you just naturally relax. Let go of any tension. Release any worries. Mm. 
and put aside any grievances. Be quiet in the moment. This moment is the one. That's the one moment in time that is the real moment. The holy moment. The holy instant. And as we keep our attention on the breath, noticing the various thoughts that come to mind, Noticing them and letting them go, we become mindful. We ask ourselves if the thoughts we're having are true. Are our emotions genuine? Noticing what is happening right now, catching ourselves every time catching ourselves every time we allow the attention to wander back to the past or forward into the future, staying present. We commit that from this moment, let us endeavor to be genuine and true in all of our interactions with those around us. Let us not present a false face or act pretentiously. Quiet, calm, true thoughts, genuine emotions. Not concerned about the approval of others, but still friendly and approachable. And we say amen and amen. So the, uh, the precept, the, the fourth precept in this, uh, in this Buddhist practice that we've been studying recently is I will endeavor not to speak falsely. So to speak falsely, of course, right, right off the bat, we know that they, they were talking about don't lie, right? But, but it's, it's, it's actually more than that. We think about this idea of speaking falsely. There's a number of things we might consider lying yes we just to tell the uh, the outright lie that would be something that we want to endeavor not to do and and this is very interesting because as honest as we think we are if we're really mindful and we really start paying attention we will see that from time to time at least the temptation to lie will come to us and for most of us lies will come and we will we will justify a lot of times by saying you know you know, we don't want to be brutally honest, uh, but it's not necessary to be brutally honest uh, to be honest. Uh, in any event, uh, let's think about this, uh, this idea of just the bald face lie. Uh, sometimes we, we may lie because uh, we're worried about the approval of others. And as we were saying in the meditation, not, not, not important, but somehow we think it is. Uh, sometimes we present some kind of a false face because uh, uh, we want to appear to be how we're not. We may um, exaggerate, we may minimize, we may justify, we may rationalize, and all of this is false speech. And we find that uh, much of the time we do these things without even realizing that we're doing it. But that's the point of the mindfulness. If we're paying attention to our thoughts, and many times if we get, if we get into this habit of paying attention to our thoughts, uh, even though the temptation to lie comes to us, we stop. 
we don't have to do it. But even if we do, remember that this prescription, this, this, this commitment and not to speak falsely is is not like a law. It's uh, it's it's something that we that we are choosing for ourselves, and it's um, it's I would say it's like a guideline, but it's also like when we when we realize that we have uh, spoken falsely, that at that point we make another commitment not to do it again right now not to do you could say just for today just for this moment just for this second no, i'm not going to do that um, so so these exaggerations they just kind of come they, they, we're blowing up stories making them bigger than than uh, what they need to be uh, if we if we're uh, somewhat uh, ashamed or or uh, believe that we're involved in some behavior we shouldn't be. We minimize that when we're talking about it to others, even minimize it in our own minds. If we've, if, if, in all of this, you know, it comes back to this, to this ego sense of, of guilt, which is really absolutely useless uh, to us in, in living a, a, a life in the present moment. But we justify our behavior. Uh, this is all false speech. We want, we, and the, the point here is just to notice the thought process that is generating this need. Look at the thought process. We're trying to protect a self that is not even real. And we'll talk more about that idea as we go on with this study. But to, to, um, to justify, to rationalize, uh, just take a moment and examine what's going on. The counteraction uh, to this whole just outright lying thing and, and distorting the story is just to stop before the words come out. And, but then if the words do come out, to stop then. I, I, there's, there's really a good uh, remedy for this, and that is if you make another commitment that if you find yourself doing any of this exaggerating, minimizing, justifying, rationalizing, <coughs> that the next words out of your mouth are, that was an exaggeration. That was a minimization. That was a justification. That was a rationalization. And then tell the truth. Now you do that a couple of times, and the humility that goes with that may very well uh, give you pause before the next time that you're tempted. Well, the next thing on my list here about speaking falsely is complaining. Complaining is... Um, this continual complaint. Uh, I, I wrote something about this uh, some time ago, uh, but it, this complaining is just uh, um, almost a chant, almost a prayer for the conditions about which I'm complaining to continue. And so these, and and uh, we uh, we had a uh, a lesson, well, some some time ago now about trying to compliment rather than complain. And, uh, you know, the old, uh, we, we, we had the, the, the mountain biking adage uh, that, we, that we had was uh, uh, no complaining, no excuses, no quitting. And this is, uh, to these first two, uh, very, very much uh, line up with this idea of speaking falsely. Uh, most of the time, uh, we we make excuses because we have some again some ego need where we believe that um, we are uh, that we that, that we're not going to perform up to some standard and so we make some excuse ahead of time or maybe in the middle of some endeavor we think we're beginning to fail and we make an excuse um, we complain we make an excuse and it's just really to cover this um, sense of inadequacy uh, in us. Uh, when we complain uh, about the behavior of others, we are totally complaining about something that uh, we have no control over. And this is really something that recently I've had to work on. So I found myself uh, detailing in my mind and sometimes in my speech the shortcomings of others. And in this regard, this, the idea of complimenting rather than complaining really comes to the forefront to, 
to find something good to say about the other person. Think about this. Think about this idea of acceptance, about accepting people as they are, to, um, to realize that making judgments of others and then speaking negatively or even thinking negatively about them is actually to be false because our perceptions are our own and comparisons between us are always incorrect. We never get it right. Even if we get close, we're still not, we still don't get it right. So to give voice to them then is to speak falsely. We have no need to change anyone. We have no need to report the seeming shortcomings of others. So we look at them, we look for the good, and then, and then find a way to remark on that. Being, you know, this all comes from concern about how we stack up to others, how they stack up to each other. It, it, it catches us up in this looping illusion. So we want to remember in thought, word, and deed that all are equal. And th th this acceptance then is just a simple form of honesty. But this one will have far-reaching effects in our lives. And the next thing on my list is this, um, is this uh, frivolity, this frivolous, unnecessary speech. And uh, again, this hits close to home because many times I find myself just talking and I'm thinking, why am I? And then when I notice what's going on, why am I even talking? I read this in this just incessant yammering about nothing. Uh, it would be very, very good for me and for all of us to consider the words that come out of our mouth before we say them. It's not this unnecessary speech. Uh, the thing that I, that I noticed uh, most prevalently and something I'm really trying to, uh, to fix is the, um, this, uh, what, what happens on the racquetball court is that um, if, uh, if I miss a shot, then I complain to myself, but sometimes out loud, uh, make some loud noise, uh, uh, act mad, get, uh, and, then, uh, and then, you know, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of really excuse making uh, because of some feeling of inadequacy. It, it, uh, it actually takes focus off the game. And this, you could, I'm talking about racquetball, but you could, you could, you could, you could fit this into any part of life. When we're complaining about this and, 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 uh, and just this, in, this, uh, this um, excuses uh, do nothing, uh, they, they, they are actually very frivolous and unnecessary, and they do nothing but take our, our focus off of whatever it is that we're trying to do. They actually make it worse uh, rather than better. And the next one uh, I think is, is really important and that's about gossip. And gossip is definitely false speech. Uh, even if the situation that we're gossiping about has some level of truth in it, uh, it's definitely false. It's false in in motive, and it's uh, and uh, and but many times it's exaggerated, and uh, it's just very unfortunate. And, uh, and but the thing is, it's again, this is not something to feel guilty about. This is something that we can all become caught up in, and we all, at one time or another, have. And unfortunately, many of us including myself, I find myself doing this. It starts off with a conversation where you're trying to be helpful and it turns into gossip. Uh, but uh, there, to remember the, these things is that, that um, when we remember who we are, that we are part of a community, part of a community of life that can't be divided. We have a common existence. And to the extent that we realize that, we are happy in the experience. The community always operates better when we remember that gossip is hurtful to everyone. So let us be kind and compassionate in our dealings with and about others. We can focus on those positive qualities which we can identify. If we're tempted by someone to participate in some negativity, we can make a correction without making, some, without making anyone feel badly. We 
can make a good observation or, if necessary, change the subject. What if today we made this decision that we're not going to make any derogatory comments about anyone or even to anyone? Would we not then be with our brother and not against him? So I was thinking about this is that there's, uh, I, I remember um, years ago, many years ago, 30, 30, 30 Two, two years ago almost now, uh, I, was at, uh, I was at church and uh, there was somebody uh, that was, you know, one of our friends that I was uh, upset with and, uh, and uh, I was talking to Jeff and, and uh, Gordy. Gordy, I, I, uh, Gordy and, and Jeff were, were at church with me and uh, uh, I started to say something about this third party who wasn't even there and... Uh, and Gordy, kind of his eyes kind of glazed over for a second, and he looked across the room, and he saw his wife, and uh, he just said, Oh, you know what? I think Arlene is looking for me. And he walked away. And uh, he didn't try to make me feel bad uh, for gossiping, but he definitely made the point. He definitely made the point that, uh, that, it, that he, we surely made the point that he wasn't going to participate in it. Uh, so, so, um, so, change the subject. Bring up something else. Uh, he did it rather abruptly and left the conversation too. But that—that's—it's um, uh, such a simple thing to do, just to gently change the subject, it, to to actually say something positive about a person uh, when the, the to the person that's not there. Uh, and then there's another way to deal with this gossip that really kind of, kind of like flips the whole thing on its head. And I've talked about this before, but not for some time. And that is, if you have somebody comes to you with a complaint about someone else, and it turns into gossip, uh, stop them in the middle of it somewhere and say, you know, you may be right. Let's go talk to them about that right now. probably pretty sure that that will stop the gossip, at least in that moment, because there are very few people that are going to want to walk with you to this other person and talk to them about what they just, whatever nastiness that they just brought to you. So in my speech and in my actions, I want to be interested in the upside to, to think Every day, even in the moment, I think this is a new day. This is a new moment. Let me begin a new in it. Let me turn my attention to the positive, to remember that old mistakes can be washed away, and we haven't even made the future ones yet. So today, we want to be attentive to our thinking, to let go of these unproductive, negative thoughts false thoughts, to stop having false thoughts. We can change our mind and focus on the good. We can, we can actually mindfully focus on building up, giving praise to others, remembering to be thankful. This speech of gratitude is true speech. To recognize the help that other people give to us. To fill our words with love and compassion to speak softly without harsh edges. God, this is really something that I got to work on. In this way, see what happens is we become, we become heralds. Uh, we become the harbinger that we, what, we, you could, and I, I say this and just realize what I'm saying, that we become ministers of good, carrying the news of our kinship into the world defending the helpless, defending the one that's not present, um, to, um, to be the one uh, who stands as their friend uh, when they're not there, to bless them by remembering the good you know is in them, to bless them by saying it out loud, to bless them when it would be easier uh, to denigrate them, to remember this is so important that we cannot give without receiving. 
and we cannot take without losing. So we give a blessing and we're blessed. We bless the one who's not present and we, and, and we bless everyone. We're living on purpose. It's about having 